So now that we've learned how to actually uh, find the file path or the directory of the file that we're going to save or load, um, and we've learned how to safely do that using the try catch block, the next thing we need to do is set up the file and understand what we want to write out. So um, what I've done is I've taken the liberty of uh, creating a simple example of this, and what this is going to do is it's going to um, output the a top scoreboard for top three names. You can see that I've created a 2D array here called top scores that holds three rows and two columns, three names, and um, sorry, three three rows of people. Um, in each row, you're going to have a name and a score. Down below, I've created this data um, very simply in the load content option or load content section. Bill has 10,000 points. Ted has 8,000. Rufus has 5,000. And the goal is to output this into the file. Now, the real important thing is, is to properly design this file so it's um, very specific. So when we want to reload that file, we know exactly what to expect. So we load it. There's no surprises or anything like that. So looking exactly at this, if this is our file, we want to figure out, well, how are we going to set this up so when we load it in, um, it's going to be simple enough that there's no extra extraneous information or anything like that. Now, there's two schools of thought in this. School number one says, at the very top of the file, give some type of number that indicates how many lines are to follow. Um, school number two says, don't give that information. Rely on the programmer when they're reading the data in to check to see whether they're at the end of the file. It's really up to you. You can choose whichever you want. I prefer to keep the file very clean, so I don't like to put that number at the very top. I like to rely on the programmer themselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this file up. So it starts off with a name, followed by a score, and then a name 2, followed by score 2. Pardon my handwriting. Name Three, followed by score three. And that's exactly what our file is going to look like. There's no extra information, no, no blank lines, no nothing. Exactly what you see there. So that's our goal. Now going back in here, we've already set up uh, the using system.io. As we said, in all file reading and writing, that is required. The next thing we need to set up is a connection between um, the data and the file. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to create a new object. It's going to be called stream. It's going to be of type stream writer. I'm just going to call it out file because I'm writing out to a file using this. Notice that I'm just declaring the variable I haven't instantiated. I'm going to instantiate it inside the try catch block. That way, if there's a problem, the error will be caught and we won't crash the program. So. But before we do that, the instantiation is going to require a full file path, not just to the directory, but to the actual file itself. So I'm going to amend this file path a little bit and add on to it at the very end at the actual name of my file. So file path is equal to file path plus exactly what I want to put in here. So I need the slash there because the slash tells me that I'm going within the directory. So I'm just going to call it myfile.txt. Now notice that there is an error on this line um, right at the M. And the reason why that error is there is because it's preceded by a slash. It thinks M is an escape character, and we know that's not. So there's two ways of fixing this. Way number one is the brute force method of just adding an extra slash in there. So then it's not going to treat it like an escape character in there. It's going to treat that double slash as a single slash. Um, the other option, which is a much cleaner option, is to proceed the quotes with an at symbol. And what it, what that does is it says, don't treat anything as an escape character within these quotations that follow. So if we had um, multiple directory paths deep, um, we wouldn't have to put the slash slash every time. We could just use a single slash for each one. So now this sets it up. Um, one quick note, uh, in the previous example, I made, I made a, a mistake where I had exception E E, uh, here instead of uh, exception ex and this was an error because we already have a variable called e right inside button save click right here the event args e so I just had to modify that so we wouldn't have any bugs um, and it still output the message appropriately um, the reason why I brought this up is because um, this may potentially be a problem where we get uh, an error here so if I want to run this program run this we hit save 
we're going to get the whole path right up to my file.txt. So we're ready to actually write out to our file. Now we need to set up our stream writer, so our out file. So out file equals file dot. Now we have two options here. We have append text, and what that's going to do is it's going to take the current file that's in existence, if it does exist, and just continue adding on to the end of that file. So if we already had three names in there, three names and scores, it would continue at the end of that and add another three names and scores. So it's probably not what we're looking to do. The other option that we can use is create text. What create text will do is if the file doesn't currently exist, it will create a file and if it and whether it does or doesn't exist um, it will uh, erase the file so all the content within it so it's gonna start from scratch start brand new so every time we're gonna have a blank file we're gonna write to it so in this case we're gonna use create text in almost all most cases you are gonna use create text and then I need to pass in the file path well I've already set that up previously in the, these four steps so I'm just going to put in file path here and this is typically where you'll get your errors that are thrown and they'll usually find their way down into the file not found exception or the exception ex down there now that I have that path set up I can now start writing out to the file now this line of text here is just for show so I'm just going to comment it out just now because we don't really need it um, and I'm going to start writing it to the file and again it works exactly like writing out to a console so I can start writing out file dot write line. Well, as we said before, looking at here, each line is going to consist of a name, a comma, and a score. No spaces or anything else in between. So I'm going to get the name from my array. So I could say, um, what do they call the array? Uh, name, no, top scores. And I know it's the first name, so it's the first row and it's the name value so it's going to be the first column and then on top of that I'm going to add to that a comma and then I'm going to add to that the top scores for the um, first row but this time the score value now this will actually write that out to the file now of course I could do this three times in a row and just modify the row value each time. Um, or I could just do a for loop that would go through each time and repeat the process. So it's really a decision. Um, there's only three rows in this one, so to be honest, I'm just going to copy and paste them just to simplify the process. So one, two, so I'm getting each row and I'm getting the name and the score for each row. Now if we were to run our program and do this, right now, um, let's quickly go into the Windows Explorer. Actually, no, we will skip that. And we're just going to run this right now. We're going to hit save. And it should be finished now, so we should be able to find that file within the directory, and it should have all the data that we're looking for. The one thing that we did miss, though, is at the very end when we're done writing out to our file, we need to put in one final line that says outfile.close. What this will do is it will close the file and allow other applications, even this application, to access the file and make sure that it's safe to access that file. So just quickly, I'm going to browse to uh, where this file is located. Um, I think I actually put it on here. File.io. And right in here, we didn't get the file. We didn't get the data because we forgot to close the file beforehand. So now we're going to try and run the program again, now that we've actually closed the file. So we're going to run it. We're going to click Save. And now we're going to try this process again. And there's the data. Bill, 10,000, Ted, 8,000, and Rufus, 5,000. And that is writing to a file.